need a solid intro for this. Anyways, welcome to race number 11 of 29 here in the 1989 throwbacks. We're here for a race at Dover Downs International Raceway, the one-mile local for the Budweiser 500. Tim Richmond holds a 54-point lead over Bill Elliott and a 59-point lead over Dale Earnhardt. Let's just jump right into the race. Wasting no time today. Anyways, we'll wait for everything to load up here. Real quick. 39 cars will be in this event. As we come on through, the pulse sitter is going to be Rusty Wallace. So Wallace, remember he had that rather uh, concerning accident earlier on in the season at Rockingham. He seems to be rebounding from that quite well and quite quickly as he really wants to get back into the top 10 in points and really wants to get back into the gist of things. So it will be a 125 lap race here at Dover, one mile. So here we go, we'll go through our top 10. So on the polls we said Rusty Wallace, in second place will have Jeffrey Bodine, third place will be Tim Richmond, and fourth Ricky Rudd. In fifth we have Brett Bodine in the 15, in sixth we'll have Bill Elliott, in seventh we'll have Phil Parsons, in eighth we'll have owner driver Alan Kowicki. In ninth, we've got Ken Schrader, who has been doing a fantastic job this season in that 35 machine. He finished second last week at the Coca-Cola 600. And rounding out the top 10 will be the number 33 of Harry Gant, who has been on an extremely resurgent season from last year. Now, here we go for the command. The command has been given. The cars are going to be rolling off here. There goes the pace car. We'll be ready for 125 laps of fast-paced action. Dover always seems to bring a very good race to the table. It's always a very interesting race. Tires usually have wore out quick here in the past years. Will that continue to show this year at this Dover track. The cars are coming down to the line and the green flag is out. Welcome to Delaware! As will be about the upper mid pack here as you can see Terry Labonte, Mark Martin, Davey Allison and company. As they come racing up off of turn number two here as they all fly by and AJ Foyt gets into the wall. Rusty Wallace has taken off here at the front. And looks like Tim Richmond's going to fall into the second position. Jeffrey Bodine gets a really strong run on the outside. It looks like he's going to take third. Elliott trying to desperately battle for fourth. He's going to get there. And Brett Bodine's going to try to slide into fifth. We'll see if he can get that. And he will. And Rudd seems like he's on the way back train. He's going to lose positions to both Phil Parsons, and if he's not careful, he's going to lose a position to Ken Schrader as well. Look at the run on the outside by Rudd, though. Oh boy, a dive bomb by Parsons there. Schrader thought about making it three wide, but man, this battle for the sixth position is not going to let up. Parsons is going to go by. Schrader's going to go by. Kowicki is also going to try to go by. And Earnhardt's also going to try to go by. Rudd really got a good run off of that corner. Kowicki up the track. Earnhardt tries to find room. He can't get it. And Rudd just continues to fall back. He can't find the inside of this track. Earnhardt's going to go by. Allison might go by. And that's going to shuffle Ricky Rudd out of the top 10 if that happens. And indeed it will. So Rudd will be shuffled all the way to the outside of the top 10. Meanwhile, we go back to the front here. You haven't missed much. Rusty Wallace has led every lap to this point. But Tim Richmond is right there. He's looking to make it two wins in a row. 
Of course, he's looking to make it two out of the last three championships. To think that the last three champions, well, that it's been two drivers the past three years. It was Earnhardt in 86, Richmond in 87, Earnhardt in 88. And they've been each other's biggest competitor in all three years. And here comes Richmond to the bottom. He's looking to get around Wallace. This will allow Jeffrey Bodine to clear in. Bodine unable to can, uh, was unable to win last week at the Coke 600, so you will not see him contend for one million dollars come Darlington. But he still does have a chance at bagging an extra hundred thousand dollars when we go to Darlington at the end of our summer stretch. That will be Labor Day weekend, the Southern 500. Of course, we are far, far away from that. This is race number 11 on the season. You saw Jeffrey Bodine. He's going to go around Pulsitter Rusty Wallace. And it looks like Tim Richmond's going to settle himself into a rather comfortable lead here at the front of the pack. A 0 0.7 second advantage right now. Going back to Jeff Bodine in this trio of cars. Brett Bodine is currently on his own in 5th. Ken Schrader, runner-up last week, is in 6th. Phil Parson, 7th, Earnhardt, 8th. Davey Allison in ninth, And Ricky Rudd currently rounding out the top 10. Alan Kowicki, he qualified really well. He was qualifying inside of the top 10. However, it does not look like he has the race pace to back up that top 10 qualifying position and he's fallen back to 11th to this point in the race and we've got uh i thought was going to be a battle there but allison really didn't get a run off turn four so davy allison he's in the top 10 he's got to be very happy with that team You know, they really struggled really, really badly early on, but they've slowly worked through their kinks, and this number 28 for Thunderbird has been slowly improving this season. We'll see if they will continue to improve as the season continues. Here comes Rudd to the bottom of Allison. And it looks like that's going to be a pass. No problem. Rudd's going to take that position away. No, maybe not. Here comes Allison on the outside. And Rudd slides up the track and he's going to get around Allison. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine, uh, Rusty Wallace, and Bill Elliott, they have all spread out here. And now Tim Richmond's 53-point lead coming into this race is looking like a lot more. It's five points for, position, for every position inside of the top five, so remember that. So that's going to be 15 points, the difference separating Richmond and Elliott. But considering Richmond's led a lap, and Elliott has not, that's another five points. So right now, Richmond is gaining 20 points on Bill Elliott and even more points on Dale Earnhardt. That's going to be in the 30, I believe that will be 39 points he's gaining on Dale Earnhardt. So this would be big if Richmond can get the job done here. He can Start to open up a little bit of a lead at the front of the field. And that would allow Richmond to start to cruise to a championship if he can get there. Of course, Elliott and Earnhardt are not going to let him get away with the championship so easily. Rusty Wallace with that atrocious start I don't think is going to be able to contend for the championship. But he's going to try to rally himself, try to get back into the top five in points. Here you can see maybe a little bit of contact there going into the corner between the 27 and the 9. Looks like Wallace got it straightened out though. 
Elliot appears to be the faster car right now. And here he goes. He's going down to the inside of the 27. 27's up. He slides back, and he'll let Elliot take the position away. As Bill Elliot will now have the third position to himself. And you know he's going to want to try to catch Tim Richmond. Meanwhile, speaking of catching Tim Richmond, Jeff Bodine's been doing a good uh, job of that these last five or six laps. He's been shaving off uh, fractions of a tenth of an inch over the past... Uh, fractions of a tenth of an inch. Uh, fractions of tenths of a second, rather, uh, these past few laps. And he's been slowly reeling in the 25. Not at any fast pace, so very slowly reeling in that 25. Jeff Bodine would love to have a win to his name here in 1989, of course. And look at this! Wow! AJ Foyt was not playing ball there with Tim Richmond. They get together going into the corner and Foyt hits off the wall again. There's major problems with that car. Meanwhile, look who pulls into the lead. Jeff Bodine! Oh, I'm sure Bodine's loving this right now. Jeff Bodine would love to get a second win this year. He won the Daytona 500. See if he can hold off Tim Richmond here and start to pull away. I would say Hendrick Motorsports, once again, is doing really well. They've got their cars 1-2 with a third car inside of the top 10. Of their fourth car, though, who happens to be Darrell Waltrip, the three-time champion of the series. Well, he's not doing as well. He's currently in the 14th position, and he's actually well behind Alan Kowicki, who is in 13th. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine, he is your leader, and he's leading rather solidly right now. Of course, that little skirmish has allowed Bill Elliott to maybe reel in the leaders a little bit. Right now, as it stands, only a 10-point gap separates Bill Elliott and Tim Richmond. So that would make the points lead 63 going into the next race. Meanwhile, Tim Richmond, he's going to look for the lead. He wants it back. Bodine's going to fight hard on the outside, but unfortunately resistance is futile. There goes the 25 back to the lead. And that's five more points Elliot is losing. Right now, if we take a look at the fastest laps, how about this for Hendrick Motorsports? Oh boy, first, second, and third are the 5, the 25, and the 35. So I wonder who's got the fastest cars this, this weekend. <laughs> Rick Hendrick's got the magic touch lately, I'll tell you that. They've been fielding some very, very fast cars lately. That is some incredible work that they've been doing. Meanwhile, it looks like Jeff Bodine's starting to fall back a little bit. Now here comes Bill Elliott. Elliott's trying to run these guys down, but I'll tell you what, Tim Richmond just pulled a lap time that was faster, way faster than anybody behind him. So that was a 143-0 for Richmond. For Bodine, it was 142-4. Elliot 141.5, uh, Rusty Wallace 141.6, and more 141s behind him. Uh, Bodine was a little bit faster there. 143s for both of the front running Hendrick cars, 142s for the two cars behind him, and as you said, well, actually, more 142s as we continue to scroll back. Ken Schrader was the odd one out with a 141.3 that lap. 
But that was probably because he's passing, because Ken Schrader's got himself into the top five now. And Earnhardt's starting to slip back a little bit. Maybe Ricky Rudd's finally starting to recover from that earlier race mishap where he got on the way back train. He's going to move into sixth here. And Brett Bodine, he's the one that's really gotten the shaft lately. He falls all the way back to eighth. He was in fifth. Meanwhile, Davey Allison's going to try to get around him. To no avail. Boy, this is easily the best that that 28 car has ran all race long. All year long, I should say. Easily the best that this 28 car has ran all year long. And I'm almost certain that these guys are doing backflips. That they finally realize they've got the speed to be inside of the top 10 consistently. Now... Let's see if they can continue to work on it. Meanwhile, I thought Richmond was getting closed in on, and then I come up here, and that's just not the case. That was just an artificial gap closing made possible by lap traffic, so that's all that's going on there. Meanwhile, tires are almost certainly a factor again. The lap times have fallen off by more than 7 miles an hour from when we started this race. Ricky Rudd is a prime example. His fastest lap was in the 147s, and his last lap was 140.7. So their lap times have really been falling off. This track seems to just eat away tires. And it, it's probably because of how wide the corners are here at Dover. It's a one mile track, but there really isn't a lot of straightaway to it. It's all high bank turns. And that's all that Dover really is. It's just, you've got the high bank turns and that's it. Oh, uh, short, short straightaways. Nothing big. Tim Richmond continues to lead here at Dover. We are on now lap number one, uh, on lap number 37 of 125. You can see Tim Richmond is closing in on the 90 of Chad Little. And he's going to go around him. Jeff Bodine is trying to get his wheel up and trying to get going here. But uh, catching Chad Little. And he gets into the back of Chad Little trying to pass him. So we might want to just keep an eye on how these cars are doing through turns 1 and 2. Because it seems like a lot of lap traffic is uh, getting away the leaders at that point. It looked like Elliot closed a ton, but then again, it looks going to be deceiving. Elliot actually fell back two tenths of a second to the leader. And you can see fifth place here, Ken Schrader having a great run. Dale Earnhardt was able to finally get around Ricky Rudd. That was the battle for sixth position. And all three of the points leaders are running well inside of the top six. Tim Richmond, of course, running the best. He's the leader of this race. Elliott in third. And with Richmond being the points leader, that's just going to inch his points lead out even further. Earnhardt's going to fall to somewhere in the vicinity of 85 points behind. Meanwhile, Bill Elliott will be roughly 60-some points behind.
if this race were to end now. We've got plenty of race left. Don't doubt yourself on that one. 125 laps around this short track. One mile. It's a short speedway. The average speed of this race so far has been pretty brisk to say the least. No cautions thus far and an average speed of 143.3 miles per hour. Shows you that these cars are really flying around this track and they're really doing a good job uh, getting through this track. And they're obviously carrying a lot of speed through the corners and even more speed down the straightaways. So this track has been playing really fast. And again, tires being a huge concern here. The lap times continue to wear off very quickly. Now we're in the lap times of 138 miles per hour for the leaders. They were up in the high 140s earlier on in this race. Jeff Verein right now, he's trying to take advantage of Tim Richmond being in lap traffic to start to run him down. And he's closed in on Richmond. Is that Richmond trying to go by on the outside? Now you can see some lap cars going down pit road. That was Richard Petty hitting pit road. And, and if pit stops are going to start to begin here on lap 45... It looked like Bodine's going to be right on the back of his teammate, Tim Richmond, as they start to pull it down pit road. We'll see if that's the case. The 25's going down pit road, so he will give up the lead to his teammate, Jeff Bodine. This is probably by design. Bodine will get five bonus points for leading that lap. And the first person to stay out with him is the 26 of Ricky Rudd. We'll see if he stays out as well. Looks like they were the only two cars to stay out. So it's going to be a crowded pit road when they come down. Here comes the leader. Meanwhile, we scroll down. Here we can see the 25. And the 9 coming out of pit road right behind him. The 9's going to let Butch Miller go. And here, look at this. Ken Schrader. Oh, did he pit really early or is he a lap down? I, 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 I don't know. I'm going to put my money on Schrader's a lap down because I don't think that... No, Schrader is not a lap down. Right now we are watching who should be your leader of the race. There comes Jeff Bodine onto the track. Tim Richmond may have had a... I think Ken Schrader just pulled out a banger of a pit stop. And he's going to come out way out in front of everybody. He's out in front of Bodine, he's out in front of Richmond, and it is 1-2-3 for Hendrick Motorsports as Ken Schrader is in the lead again. So Ken Schrader, he's trying to really get redemption for what was an abysmal season last year, trying to hold on to his Hendrick Motorsports ride. There's rumors on, will he be able to stay on? He needs to have a good season to stay on. Well, right now he's had a great start. Not necessarily championship winning, but definitely a great start. We'll see if he's going to be able to take home a checkered flag today. He's way out in front, two seconds ahead of Jeffrey Bodon and Tim Richmond. Also, Terry Labonte has come out of absolutely nowhere, and he's all of a sudden in fourth. Bill Elliott drops all the way to sixth, 
somehow. And that's not good for Elliot. And Dale Earnhardt being in fifth will actually mean that Earnhardt will overtake Elliot in the standings for second. By a point. And boy, Richmond is clearly faster than Bodine. He's looking for any way around Jeff Bodine. He can. Bodine slips up the track a little bit. Richmond can't take advantage. The battle for second between teammates. Number five, Jeffrey Bodine. He is the one the Daytona 500 earlier this year. 25 of Tim Richmond, the 1987 champion. He's already won two races this season, including the Coke 600 last week. And it looks like Jeff Bodine's starting to pull away a little bit. They're going to come up on the slow car, the slow Pontiac of Michael Waltrip in the 30. Waltrip will give him plenty of room. And it looks like Bodine's going to come off the corner just fine. And he will stay in the second position for now. Meanwhile, Ken Schrader looking for his first career win. He finished second last week at the Coke 600. And all he needed to do, he was leading up until the final pit stop. All he needed to do was pull out a banger of a stop. And it looked like that the crew was going to be able to do that, but it just wasn't to be. Tim Richmond's crew was just better. And just score one for Tim Richmond and his crew as they really won that race for them. I thought that Schrader had the speed to run down Tim Richmond in that final section, but ultimately the pit crew really let Ken Schrader down. This week, not the case. The pit crew really picking up Ken Schrader this week as they are way out in front. So there are any new times up at the top of the board with the last set of pit stops and it doesn't look like it. Nothing really new there. Terry Labonte being in fourth and Ken Schrader being in the lead are the two only really new things. There is contact between Richard Petty and Terry Labonte. And boy, I, I think the spotters just must be blind there going into turn one because a lot of lap traffic has been cutting have been cutting off lead lap cars here. So just keep that in mind that Turn one, maybe a blind spot to the spotters here at the Dover Downs International Raceway. So maybe not pass uh, going into turn one. Meanwhile, uh, oh boy, there's really no room here for Richmond. Can he get the job done here? He will. So Richmond goes to second, but I'm pulls a crossover. Oh, that was a great veteran move by Bodine. The 1982 Rookie of the Year. And this battling, what's that going to allow? Here comes Terry Labonte and the Junior Johnson Ford. Labonte trying to get around the 25. More contact. AJ Foyt only slipped up the track. That's about it. Foyt's going to get in the way of the 25 there. Richmond can't pull the crossover. And Terry Labonte will go into the third position. But look how much slower he is in comparison to the Hendrick machines. It's not going to be long before Richmond uh, gets back around the 11 car. So Bodine tried to pass Dale Jarrett in the 29, and all of a sudden all hell started to break loose behind him. 
We had Tim Richmond pass for second place. And then Bodine pulled the crossover. And now we got this move. That's a daring move by Terry Labonte. Trying to make it three wide in the corner. Is he going to have the momentum down the back straight away? It looks like he will. Terry Labonte trying to go to second. Bodine trying to hold on on the outside lane. He's not going to be able to do it. And Terry Labonte... He's going to go into the second position. And that was some really crafty driving there by Terry Labonte. He's done a fantastic job. And really, you don't want to say breakout season, but Terry Labonte's really done a good job in that 11 card so far. He's just had bad luck where he's just started falling through the field. You know, through the middle of the races. He's had speed to compete, but that's about it. He just hasn't had the luck go his way this season. We're on lap 67 of 125 now here from Dover. Ken Schrader has a three-second advantage over the number 11 of Terry Labonte. So we're going to start going through the field. Of course, we've got Jeff Bodine and Tim Richmond. We were just talking about them. And now we have Dale Earnhardt. He's in the fifth position. And right now, he's looking to overtake second in points if he were to do so. He's only dropping 10 points to Tim Richmond right now, which would put him at, I believe, yeah, it's somewhere around the upper 60s in points. And it'd be the same thing for Bill Elliott. I believe Elliott would be 68 points behind and Earnhardt 67 points behind if this race were to end now. You got to consider Tim Richmond has a lot of lap. Both Earnhardt and Elliott have not. So that's five bonus points to Tim Richmond's favor. And if some kind of issue happens where the 35 starts having problems and then the 11 and the 5 and the 25 start battling, then you've got to consider Tim Richmond for the most laps led, and that's another 5 bonus points. Going further back, we've got the 26 of Ricky Rudd in the Quaker State Buick. He's got two wins on this season, and... Although he might not be exactly competing for a third win today, he's just trying to be as consistent as possible, trying to move into the top five in points. Here we have a battle for the eighth position between Phil Parsons and Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace is just trying to have a season that even compares to his 1988 campaign, and I think this team would be very, very pleased with that. If that doesn't end up happening, I think that they'll be okay. But any, but anything even close to what they pulled off in 1988, they would say they've done a fantastic job. Phil Parsons, he got his first win since 1987 this season. And he's been having a, a decent year for uh, the Jackson brothers. And uh, he is one of the drivers that may be on the bubble to be out of a car for next year. So if he, hopefully he'll be able to continue to run well. And we'll see if that uh, continues to happen or not. One driver that's locked up for many, many, many years, however, is the 28, Davey Allison. And a lot of people have expected so much out of this kid. He became the first driver to win in his rookie year since going back to Dale Earnhardt in 1979. Not many people can say that they've had a rookie year where they've actually won a race. Well, Davey Allison, he can definitely say that as he picked up a win at, 19, at Michigan in 1987. Here you can see Davey Allison just barely scraping by in the top 10 as he's had troubles staying within the top 25 in points because of finishing issues. They need to be able to put some finishes together, actually finish the races, and just start finishing in the top 10, build some confidence for the team, and I think they'll be well on their way 
to uh, a championship in a few years. Meanwhile, you've got Brett Bodine in the 15, having a fantastic season thus far for Bud Moore. I think he's very happy with the way Brett Bodine is driving. Bodine is one of those drivers that is on the bubble. You know, Bob Moore is looking for a new driver, especially after Brett Bodine's eh, season last year. But if Bodine continues to do well, maybe there will be no driver change for Bob Moore. Continuing to go back, we've got the veteran himself, Harry Gant. He's in the 12th position at the ripe old age of 49. Again, he's not exactly competing for the win, but he's doing a fantastic job right now. As it looks like we have a major accident here involving Ricky Rudd, Dick Trickle, and Dale Jarrett. The caution flag was displayed. And we'll, we'll just try to figure out what exactly happened here. I, I don't even know what... People are already on the apron. Butch Miller's on his roof. Something happened here. Yeah, it's in that blind spot going into turn one. Kyle Petty and Butch Miller get together. Butch Miller just pops the outside retaining barrier. He comes down. Nowhere for Dick Trickle to go. Nowhere for Ricky Rudd to go. Nowhere for Dale Jarrett to go. Looks like Hutch Strickland got a part of it. Man, that was some... Rough stuff. Caution flag immediately displayed. As that's going to nullify Ken Schrader's lead that he had. So now everyone's on pit road. We'll see exactly how Schrader's going to be able to fare. See if he's going to be able to get out in front of everyone else. Everyone should still have to make one more pit stop. Looks like Schrader will be out first. And then it's going to be Bodine second, Richmond third, Labonte fourth, Elliott fifth, Wallace sixth, Parsons seventh, Earnhardt eighth, Brett Bodine ninth, and Harry Gant tenth. So Ken Schrader's crew once again pulling out a banger of a stop. And that's what they need to do. That's what they need to continue to do. If Schrader's pit crew uh, holds up in this race, we could be looking at another first-time winner this season. Of course, we have Mark Martin becoming a first-time winner at Talladega. We'll see if we have a similar repeat feat here today at Dover. Dover has seen some interesting winners in the past, most notably Cale Yarborough, even well past his prime in his own team. Yeah, Cale Yarborough has a couple of throwbacks wins here at Dover, 1985 and 1986. Almost got the jo job done in 87 as well. Kale Yarbrough, of course, not going to be at Dover this time to compete for the win. We go back, and the 29 car, of course, is being driven by Dale Jarrett. As Dale Jarrett, uh, he was involved in that last incident. He is now off the track. He is retired. Jimmy Means, apparently he ran out of fuel on the track, so he's done. Butch Miller is gone because of the accident, and so is rookie Dick Trickle. It looks like Ricky Rudd, however, he is going to try to continue on this. No, he will not. Never mind, Ricky Rudd will not try to continue the race, so he is also out. Your first car a lap down on the inside there is Morgan Shepard in the 75. 
Another driver that might be out of a ride next season. We have 17 cars currently on the lead lap. The last car being the number 23 of Eddie Bierschwald. Hendrick Motorsports, one, two, three, here at Dover. As they want to continue their red hot streak. The pace car is going to pull down into pit road here. We're going to restart on lap number 82. 44 laps to go here at Dover. The green flag is out and we're back underway here for the Budweiser 500. And Schrader getting that huge jump on the lap traffic. Schrader's going to be able to pull away here. Meanwhile, it's going to be three wide for the fourth position. Terry Labonte got into the wall. He cut across the track. Somehow didn't cause an accident. It's crazy. Look at this. Threading the needle by Dale Earnhardt and Davey Allison. They're all going three wide back here. Trying to find some line between... Him in the lap traffic. And this is becoming a very, very tight track right now. This is Dover Racing at its finest right there. Three wide. Trying, everyone desperately trying to find the fast line. What's the line that works? What's the line that doesn't? Rusty Wallace found the line that works. Meanwhile, we have issues for... Jeff Bodine, he's coming down pit road. Oh, that's not good for that five team. Looks like they're going to come down early. They're short pitting. That's what they're doing. Jeff Bodine is short pitting. And he's going to have enough tires and fuel to make it all the way to the end of this race. That is an interesting strategy being pulled by Brett Bodine, Jeff Bodine, rather. He's going to be able to make it all the way to the end of the race now. And he's got fresh tires. The question is, are they going to be fresh enough tires to make the strategy work? All that he has to do, though, is... All that he needs to do is, well, he needs to make up time. Right now, all the leaders, they're turning their fastest laps of the race. Boy, Jeff Bodine really taking a risk there. He's got to hope that he's got enough of a speed boost to be able to... Gain time on the leaders. This is going to be an interesting pitch strategy by that five team. And we'll see how it plays out. As we said, I believe everybody's still going to have to pit again. It's going to be close. They restarted with 44 to go. Ken Schrader right now, he's got to be loving it. His pit crew did him just a perfect job today. He's enjoying a two-second lead over Bill Elliott right now, and that lead's pretty much remaining constant. He's just doing a great job right now. Pretty soon they'll start, we'll, we'll probably slate Ken Schrader down as leading the most laps. And this is the way you really need to get your first career win right here. Is going out there and dominating a race. Not a fluke victory. Not a fuel mileage win. Not a pit strategy win. But just going out there, having great speed, and dominating. Period. And that's what Ken Schrader is doing right now. He was the 1985 Rookie of the Year. He came up with Junie Don Levy Racing, the number 90 Ford. That team has only seen one winner in its entire existence, and that was by Jody Ridley in 1981. 
1981. He came over to Hendrick Motorsports in 1988 to drive the fourth car for Hendrick. Of course, Hendrick Motorsports, they're going to be working with Los Angeles and Hollywood next year for the filming of Days of Thunder. And Ken Schrader is slated to still, well, if he's still going to be with the team, he's still slated to drive the fourth Hendrick car. Hendrick Motorsports is supposed to be providing the cars for that movie, so we'll see what's going on. We'll probably see some interesting movie-related cars once we start getting close and into 1990 for Ken Schrader. Meanwhile, right now, it's just a 1.96 second gap back to Elliott. They're pretty much matching each other, lap by lap, group by group. They're running nearly identical. Not that time, though. Elliott was able to reel them in quickly, but I think that was due to the lapped car. It's almost certainly due to the lapped car, so... Don't put too much blame on it for Elliot. Elliot's coming up on the 71 here. He's going to try to find a way around him. Not a problem. There goes Elliot around. The lead's one and three quarters seconds. Meanwhile, Tim Richmond. He wants to make sure his lead doesn't start to evaporate if he's able to get around Terry Labonte here for third. That would mean that he is even with Bill Elliott in this race on points, and the points lead's going to stay at 53. Of course, this a uh, win in this race would mean... Huge things for Elliot towards the points. And he is reeling in Ken Schrader now. These guys are all alone and two tenths of a second was taken out of that lap time. And of course we've got the question, does everybody need to pit again? Remember they restarted 44 laps to go. The pit window is 44 laps. So it's a, going to be a huge question mark and interesting pit stop. Jeff Bodine pitted early. And that's why he's currently down in 25th right now. He's short pitted, but he's gaining time on the leaders. No doubt about that. He's gaining a lot of time on the leaders. So if, all, if everybody does end up pitting with, say, 5-10 laps to go... Jeff Bodine will likely be your winner of this race. And that's why I said Jeff Bodine really only needs to pull even pace with these guys right now. Because when they come back out, there won't be a lot of race left. There'll be maybe five laps to go in this race. And Bodine, with that marginally fresher rubber... That he has right now. Of course it's going to be dead compared to the leaders. And you better hope that the race ends really damn quick. But. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what plays out here. If all the leaders end up having to pit with say five laps left in the race. Elliot is coming. And it, it, it's, it's coming quick, so we may have a very interesting battle for the lead here coming down these final few laps. As you see Richard Petty on pit road. Remember, Richard Petty, he came down on pit road. He started the green flag pit stop cycle last time around. Will we see more pit stops this time around? We'll see.
Ken Schrader keeping it on the track for now. He's just trying to desperately run away from Bill Elliott. Ken Schrader trying to hold on for his first career win here in the throwbacks. Can he get it done? 21 laps to go when he comes to the line, and that just seems like forever right now. With Elliott lurking one second behind him. Elliott hasn't closed any in these last three laps. Maybe Elliott burnt up his tires a little bit trying to catch Ken Schrader. That will play to Schrader's advantage. Lap traffic, however, seems to be playing to Elliott's advantage. If he pulled away from Elliott a little bit there again. Maybe about a half of a tenth of a second. Nothing more, nothing less. And now he's right on the back of the tent of Derek Cope. This is going to slow Schrader down. Schrader's got to make very quick, efficient work of the lap traffic now that he's caught it. And he's got to hope that Elliot runs into similar luck as him. We'll see if this is the case. Oh, Elliot just moving Derek Cope out of the way there. He's having absolutely nothing of Derek Cope being in his way. So you're seeing who's being the aggressive driver and who is not really being the aggressive driver right now. Elliot is really attacking these lapped cars. Ken Schrader is just trying to get through them clean. I have, I have a feeling right now we're... No matter what happens, pit stop or not, I think we're going to be set up for an exciting finish here at Dover. There goes Schrader. He's going to get around Lake Speed. Elliot is coming. Elliot is definitely coming. Schrader's trying to get to the bottom of Mickey Gibbs. Now he's starting to be a bit aggressive. Now he's being real aggressive. He's going to be good. Schrader looking to the outside of Ben Hess. No grip there. He's going to cross him over on this straightaway for certain. There he goes. Elliot putting a similar move on Mickey Gibbs behind him. So there goes Schrader around Ben Hess. 15 laps to go. Oh boy. Schrader now catching a, a bunch of lap cars here. Harry Gant. Harry Gant's going a lap down. Oh, this is going to be huge for Elliot. If Elliot can really cut through these guys here. Because Schrader's going to be behind a lot of cars. And Chad Little. Remember, that's Ken Schrader's former ride there. The Dunleavy number 90 car. And Schrader's really getting held up. This is big now. This is what Elliot needed if he was going to try to win this race. Well, he needed not to get caught behind Harry Gant on the exit of that straightaway, that's for certain. Schrader's going to get free. Elliot unable to do anything. In fact, he's going to get caught out on the high lane. Oh, I think the only thing that's going to rob Schrader of his first career win now is going to be some kind of pitch strategy. Does he run out of gas? Does he blow a tire or something else like that? That's the only thing I can see uh, taking Schrader's first win here in NASCAR out of his hands. The lead's going to be about one and a half seconds here once Elliott finally clears all these guys. Unless Elliott runs up like a madman. I just don't see it happening. So 
speaking of running like a madman, that is something that the five of Jeff Bodine is definitely doing. If we can find him, here he is. You can just see how much faster he is compared to everyone else around him. As you'll see, he's going to make real quick work of the 17 there. It's going to go right around him. You can see him three miles an hour faster than anybody else on the track right now. On average. And that's insane. Tim Richmond got just got to no that no that's not what that was. Dale Earnhardt just passed Terry Labonte for fifth. That's what that change was. Meanwhile, this race, unless something weird happens, should belong to Ken Schrader. Now, can everybody make it here? only thing that's going to stop Schrader it is running out of gas or running into lap traffic. An excellent job by Hendrick Motorsports again. They've got their cars first and third. Could have had first, second, and third. But uh, some kind of issue or some kind of weird pitch strategy with Jeff Bodine uh, simple behind the pit road. Elliot is closing, and it it it's closing pretty quick. He's caught two tenths of a second in the last lap and a half. Oh boy. Lap some lap traffic. And by some lap traffic, I mean Dave Marcus is slated to get in the way in the next five laps of this race. That's all that's left is five laps. Elliot has five miles to reel in one second worth of gap. This will help him. Yep. Dave Marcus holding up Ken Schrader here. That will help him. We'll see by how much it exactly helps them. It ain't going to be enough. It looks like Schrader's going to get it, guys. Comes up off of turn two. Three laps to go. I don't think Elliot's going to be able to do anything about it. There's no way. Only question now is, can Ken Schrader and the rest of the leaders make it? Two laps to go. Looks like Schrader's still good. One second the gap back to Elliott. Yeah, unless something catastrophic happens here. We'll see exactly if there is anything like that. We're coming to the white flag. This is all Ken Schrader's. He comes down to the inside of the 14. They get they get together. Wow. A almost disaster for Ken Schrader. Foyt and Schrader get together in turns one and two. Nothing comes of it though. Schrader's going to come off of turn number four, and he's going to collect his first career win here at Dover Downs International Speedway. Wow, I thought that was going to be disaster for the 35 team there. Oh, that was close. I was honestly getting scared there. I was honestly getting scared. You see, everything is complete. We go to the points, and yep, 54 points separate Richmond and Elliott. 
Earnhardt falls back to 74 points behind after a good run. And Ken Schrader picks up career win number one. And that will propel him into the fourth position in points. 222 points back on the leader. Well, that was a great way to pick up your first career win by Ken Schrader. If you want to ever pick up your first career win, that's how you do it. Dominating fashion, no doubt about it. As we continue to look, Kyle Petty still without a top 5. Neil Bonnet still without a top 10. Daryl Waltrip, he's still in the top 10 in points and without a win. And... Davey Allison is still yet to lead a lap, and that, that, those are all your best worsts. We'll check in also on the Rookie of the Year battle. Right now that is being won by Dick Trickle, who is 22nd in points. 24th in points is Hutch Strickland, and he's not too terribly far behind Dick Trickle there. The next contender is Jimmy Spencer, and he's also not too terribly far down from Dick Trickle, maybe 120 points or so. And then it's a long way down to 30th place, Ben Hess, who's 120 points down. And then we have Chad Little, who's right behind him, Rick Mast, Mickey Gibbs, Butch Miller, and going all the way down... Oh, that's it. Butch Miller is the last one. Anyways, that's going to be it. We'll see you next time for the first ever NASCAR race at Sears Point.